right, everybody. My name is Brennan from the Adventurous Nurse Blog. I have the absolute pleasure of introducing Dr. Jean Watson uh, to you, nursing students, nurses, medical professionals who follow the Adventurous Nurse Blog. As a published author, winner of many national and international awards and honors, the founder of the original Center for Human Caring in Colorado, a former president of the National League of Nursing, a founding member of the International Association of Human Caring and International Care Disc Consortium, founder and director of the Watson Caring Science Institute and an inducted living legend by the American Academy of Nursing, the highest honor. I want to thank you for all of your leadership and contributions to the nursing profession. Your caring philosophy has transformed caring education and caring healing practices for hospitals and improve the relationship and journey between the nurses and patients all across the world. Thank you so much for joining me today, Dr. Jean Watson. Thank you, Brennan. So as a graduate of the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program at McEwen University in 2015, I was first introduced to your work by one of my former professors and one of your dear friends, Dr. Colleen Maycutt. It was at that time that I realized that nursing was much more than just a science of simply addressing the physiological needs. Nursing was also an art that embraced the person as a whole, both physically and emotionally, and when done with intention, can create compassionate and caring relationships between the patient and the nurse. And I had a number of questions that I wanted to ask you today because I felt that at that time in my practice as a student, it really kind of transformed my approach to nursing as well. I think when you are one a student, you, you are very task orientated, and especially in the clinical setting, but when you're able to take a step back and almost approach that healing journey as, as one that you're taking with your patients and not one that you're necessarily doing on your patients, uh, it's quite a beautiful thing. So I would love to get your thoughts on just your work over the years and, and how you came to be such an important nursing theorist um, within our profession over the last uh, few decades. Well, I think the origin is my commitment to humanity, really, at the core, and to become aware through nursing education that nursing was not just about a subset of medicine, but it didn't have its own language or its own philosophical foundation for its science, even, and was starting to just advance under what I call nursing qua medicine in terms of nursing qua nursing with its own philosophical, ethical, moral worldview, its own understanding of the ontology of our being and in relation and all ways of knowing, so an expanded epistemology and a whole different approach to methodologies that capture the human experiences and all the vicissitudes of humanity which have been silently on the margin, and yet our education and our practice has been oriented toward these institutional, medicalized, clinicalized, objectified, medicalized views of our humanity, which was very painful for me to uh, experience the gap and the void. And it was only when I got into psych nursing that I began to realize the shift from this absolutist black and white paradigm to a uh, relativistic and to understand human behavior and the complexities and having a, a relativity worldview of connectedness and meaning and unknowns mm -hmm. versus having to be everything known and objectified and scientized in that traditional sense. So out of my frustration and also because of my education mm -hmm. and getting more at, depth and philosophy and values and history of nursing and so forth, I um, began to find a way through my first book. I was actually, um, I was at the University of Colorado and I was considering leaving nursing mm -hmm. because I saw nursing advancing under medicine as a subset of medicine, trying to be like medicine. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of disappointed me that we didn't have any more foundation and ability to articulate why are we in the university? What is our science model? What is it we have to offer? And so that's how I came up with that question to myself. Is there anything core mm -hmm. to nursing? Is there anything essential that transcends time and space and diagnosis and treatment and age groups? Is there something essential about our humanity that is core to what we need to advance in terms of understanding nursing as a mature discipline of caring, healing, and health mm -hmm. to balance and complement 
the finest of medical science and technology, but not to be a subset under it. We need the finest of both entities, so yin and yang. Exactly. So that was my first book of the core versus the trim of nursing, which we focus a lot on the trim. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, both in education and practice, return to those core foundations for us to even survive. And in some ways, I think this pandemic has put a spotlight and helped us to reveal those basic human caring practices that I would frame now as the 10 care task processes that nurses are practicing, but they don't often know that's what they're doing. They're just doing these caring acts or, or nursing arts as well as the science without having any language to define it and to even take it from the margins because everybody's having caring moments, but they're ad hoc. Mm -hmm. How do you take them from ad hoc and make them articulate so that they're identified and they're languaged because if we don't have our own language and our phenomena we're invisible mm -hmm. so this too is part of the history and the, the politics of nursing as well so by having the language of our phenomena of human caring has given a great boost to nursing but it's it's grounded not just in that language it's grounded in a deep philosophy and a value system that honors the unity of mind, body, person, whole in relation to their environment, all the way up to the planetary and cosmic field. Everything is connected now. So we're in this unitary caring science framework that we may not like, you may not agree with, but you can't deny that there's a new world upon us. And the pandemic is absolutely like a concrete, livable metaphor for the reality that everything is connected to everything else. There's no hiding place down here, in the words of Maya Angelou. And she's, you know, you cannot turn your face away from it. It's here in front of us. And nurses are literally giving their life for this work. Mm -hmm. They are losing their life. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you for all of that. But I, I do believe that a lot of the incredible work that you've done over the last few decades has really contributed to where we are now. And I agree with you that in, in the course of this pandemic, it's really shed light to the spotlight of, of nurses and their stories, and even a lot of patients and family stories too. And I think people that not necessarily even in the hospital, it shed light to that it's so much more than just an illness or disease of physiologic nature as well too. The, the mental health and well being is so important. And we have to focus on the body, the mind, the spirit as a whole. There were a number of areas in California where they were actually getting more suicide deaths than COVID deaths as well too. And it's something that I'm really hopeful that we're able to learn a lesson, you know, as a society that there it's so much more than just addressing the physiological needs. When you look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's not just the, the foundation of physiological needs. It is so much more than just that. And I too have worked in uh, psychiatry. I worked in forensic psychiatry for a couple of years and adolescent psychiatry for four years. And I came down here actually to work with, in a very special case, um, helping out with, with a couple patients that um, fit both a med surge and a psychiatric need. And they had asked me to maybe give some advice or, or offer some insight and help with the nurses down here. And I, my biggest piece of advice is you cannot enter that room with a task oriented approach. You have to meet people with where they are at. You have to take this compassionate journey together, step by step. And when they are suffering, you too are suffering in this journey. And when they're healing, you too are healing in this journey. And it's such an incredible thing when you're able to perhaps even put yourself in, a, in almost a vulnerable position where you're able to open up and be intentional with your thoughts and your actions and to listen and to just have this moment in time together. And I just think it's such an incredible thing. But it's not just important in, in mental health and, and in the, the world of psychiatry, but it exists everywhere. It's not just because you're, you're admitted for a med surge need. You're not just there for a, a physiological need. Um, there's so much more to it too. And I think often as a nurse, we're, we're often focused on the vital signs and our pain assessments and, and how the wound is looking, but how are you feeling? How, do you, how is this new incision going to impact your maybe your self-esteem moving forward, you know, how is this impacting your relationships or, or just trying to relate to people on a whole new level. And I just thank you. I think you've made so many great points there. And I will say that I do believe that the future of nursing in healthcare is extremely bright, but we will face challenges moving forward. 
as you know, there is a nursing shortage that is to be expected, and that might come with the in nursing uh, um, demographic that is uh, predominantly uh, a little bit older. We could see up to half of the current nurses retire in the next 10 to 15 years. And we're also experiencing an aging population too, where people are living longer and they're living with more chronic illnesses than ever before. So while the supply is getting a little bit less, it perhaps might not be able to keep up with the growing demand. And I've talked to a number of nursing students and experienced nurses who have express, expressed that they simply feel as though that they are becoming a little bit more task orientated and maybe a little bit less able to focus on the time that they want to have with their patients to provide this caring and compassionate relationship with them. But as we said before, with the caring science and embracing the whole person and the unity of the mind, body and spirit as one in a relationship with environment at all levels remains at the forefront of what makes the nurse patient relationship special and impactful. With that fear, there may be a loss of the ability for intentionality with caring, healing, and wholeness if they're only able to focus on the disease, illness, or pathology of the patients. How can new and experienced nurses be leaders in ensuring that they will continue to support an environment that builds caring and compassionate relationships with their patients and families in light of these growing demands? Well, it's a process of mutuality between the nursing leadership as well as the staff nurses at concrete basic level. It's mm -hmm. through the system and where I found the successes happening is where you have leadership at the top who are really embracing a theory guided practice model and something that's really supporting the staff in their consciousness, in their education, in their advancement, in their ability to transcend the task and skills and be present authentically. While it's not about not doing the task, it's the consciousness, it's the intentionality, it's the presence, it's the full use of self and the old Hildegard model of how do you bring yourself into that space, how do you hold that space, how do you seek to honor the spirit of that person, even though you may not like the behavior or you, you, you're transcending the disease and diagnosis, how do you connect with that person, how do you even prepare yourself to enter into that space, if you have a theory that you take seriously and use that as your consciousness intentional guide, you will change your practice because you will see things differently. Mm -hmm. My definition is theory is the Latin word theoria. It literally means to see. If you can't see things differently, you don't have a consciousness to even see that whole person. You're seeing the body or you're seeing the task or you're seeing the skill that you have to do or you're seeing the diagnosis. And so this requires a whole way of rethinking ourselves and understanding humanity and our world today and it requires a new worldview of connectedness and meaning. You can't go in and just do something to somebody without it affecting you. So now we're into this unitary field where whatever I'm doing to myself or self-caring, if I'm not taking care of myself with compassion and kindness and patience, forgiveness, Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that with the others. If I'm not doing that with others, I'm, I'm not doing it to myself. So now there's this awakening that what's happening to one level of humanity is happening to the other level of humanity. So it's kind of like, oh my, you know, in one of my videos, I, I have this statement. I don't know where it came from. I think I channeled it somewhere. I said, um, this one moment with this one person may be the reason we're here on earth at that time, at this time. If we held that in our consciousness, and that person is there for you, me, <clears throat> as much as I'm there for them, mm -hmm. we're learning, particularly around the palliative care, death and dying, and the notion of caring theory transcends all these parameters of diagnosis, <clears throat> and whether you're inpatient, outpatient, wherever you are. It's about our humanity. So it really is the origin of my work, of course, is nursing, but it really transcends nursing. Mm -hmm. I think that's incredible too. And over the last few years, I've really become a big believer in, you know, people are in your life or you may be in their life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And that patient nurse relationship, just for everything to happen, when you break down every event that maybe took place, even beginning with maybe why you went into nursing and why you chose that hospital and everything that went into that moment in time where you're in that room with that patient, with their family, there's millions of decisions that had to have brought you two together too. And so I think to not be intentional is, is well, it would be a shame to, to not have that opportunity to really 
fulfill that moment in time together. And I've been really touched by a lot of the patients and families that I've worked with. And I feel often I sometimes get so much more out of being with them than, than they get from me. And I hope that's not always the case. I hope it's mutual, but I've been touched by so many people. And I think even being down here in California by myself, I've had the opportunity to really focus on that because my social interactions and, and the people I engage with, I rely so heavily on my patients, those children and their families. And it's been such a incredible experience coming from a different country too. And so I'm embracing it. And, and um, this leads me to my next question too, because I also took two years of political sciences and economics. And I do think that nurses make great leaders, both in hospitals and organizations and in the community too. And, in light of recent events around the world, such as the Black Lives Matter movement and the feminist movement, for example, where there are demonstrations for needs of inclusiveness and change, you know, I've spoken to a number of nursing students and new graduate nurses who, because they are on the front lines, feel as though that they have a real opportunity to support this positive change. However, many have expressed that they don't know how they can make such change possible. You suggested that caring science, whoever interacts and intersects with those disciplines and areas of focus, such as feminist studies, peace studies, education, ethics, and human service fields such as social work. What impact can nurses have on supporting important societal changes through the delivery of healthcare? And how do you recommend nurses exercise their voices and take action? Because nurses are one of the most trusted professions in the world for a right reason. And I think we have a real opportunity to exercise our voice and to make real positive change. Well, one of the things about both nursing as well as the public You know, there's this quote from Peggy Chen. It's like, do we do what we do? Do we do what we know? Do we know what we do? It's like we have been doing this work for hundreds of years, <laughs> 200 specifically in terms of Nightingale and the International Year of the Nurse. But it's like we haven't had the language or the maturing of our own paradigm until in the last couple of, I'd say two or three decades, we're getting more and more clear, more and more mature as a distinct caring, healing, and health profession that balances and complements medicine and treatment and cure at all cost. But if we don't have the language and the ability to give voice and be articulate about this and have a higher consciousness ourselves about the maturing of nursing as a discipline and grounded in this history as well as knowledge base, then we we get detoured into the day-to-day -day turns and, and pressures and, and politics, really. But if we have a, and I, we do have, whether we've named it as such, we have a global covenant with humanity. And that global covenant is to sustain humanity and human dignity, integrity across all cultures, nationalities, borders. So when we're practicing human caring, we are honoring the global covenant with humanity that transcends all of these differences and unites us because at some level, we honor the diversity and the unity as one. Mm -hmm. and we, uh, in nursing, you have to learn to deal in paradox. It's not a black and white. It's both and, and it's all in between, mm -hmm. that we're constantly having to grasp with and put our, our mind around how do you handle something that's simultaneously contradictory, but somehow is unifying. And this is where we are in this world. But it's also a time that I think that in, at some level, almost in the in an infinite field that we don't even know yet is happening, Mm -hmm. That nursing is midwifing a new approach to healthcare that transcends the institution because the institution is still an industrial model of product. But it's a post hospital era. And so, nursing and its commitment and core and covenant and ethic and all that brings us to why we're here, this calling. If we can give voice and language to that in small and grand ways, whether it be at a political rally or whether it be in, in ourselves, but the ultimate change in the world comes from change within first. Mm -hmm. You can't make anybody else change. We have to do our own work and face our own struggles with black and white and diversity and whatever our, our issues are that we hold in our heart and begin to realize that we're all one. Mm -hmm that's this awakening, that's this new worldview. 
And I think what we see in society right now with all the restlessness is a really breakdown of the traditional Western worldview that's one of separation. Mm -hmm. You're different from me and therefore you're my enemy. That's the history, that's the mindset, that's the way it's set up in the politics. And that's the yin and yang model. Mm -hmm. And the historical yang energy has been dominant throughout time in terms of women and profession and nursing, et cetera. But now we see the emergence of the goddess, if you will, or the emergence of the yin and the men's role now is to hold the space and to be the anchor there. So this emergence of a unified field of the balance of the yin and yang can now emerge. And nursing is a, is a tremendous archetype. We are an archetype for the yin healing energy that needs to emerge not just for ourselves and our patients, but for the world, for the globe, for the planet. So the other piece of this work is that in a unitary field model, no matter what we're doing in that one moment is affecting the whole field now. So the more enlightened we become, and there are 20.7 million nurses and midwives in the world or more than that now, mm -hmm. each one of us, if we do our own journey into this higher vibrational field, for self and others and planet in small and grand ways that work for us, we literally can change the world because there is a new world emerging. Mm -hmm. We may not like it or agree with it, but you can't turn your back on it. It's happening. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. And I think in an era of globalization, I'm a big believer that diversity and, and inclusiveness is what actually yields success. I think when you get multiple voices and backgrounds and people around the table that all have something different to offer, and I believe in a strength-based approach, Absolutely. powerful things can happen. If I spent the entire day talking to myself, yes. it would be very difficult to get a lot of things done. But when you bring in a lot of different people from different parts of the world, it's yeah. incredible what can be accomplished. And I think for a lot of organizations that are finding success, whether it's in healthcare or in other industries, it's because they're bringing in people who have those different backgrounds and embracing that diversity. And nursing is such an incredible profession because across the world, we might speak different languages, we might have different religions or beliefs, but we are all performing the same profession. And for me, I've been blessed because we take in patients from all over the world. I, see get, I get the opportunity to be with children and families who come from all over. And so we do have an opportunity to be, you know, promoting cultural sensitivity and to really, uh, again, from a humanitarian standpoint, really be leaders in this transition because, again, whether people like it or not, this is where the world is moving. And if you embrace it and you work with it, I think that that's where people are going to find a lot of success as well, too. And people who are almost stuck in their ways, they're going to get lost behind. And I'm very excited because I think this new generation of, of nurses coming out, they're so excited to be here. And, and there's a lot of uh, belief that people can make that positive change too and I and I'm just I'm excited about it you know when I talk to a lot of people who are from Canada and the U.S. and I've actually reached out to a number of nurses of you know across Australia and Asia and Europe and there's a commonality among all of us even though there's so many differences too so if we're able to unify and work together you know the world is going to be a very bright place. Yes. I have, sorry go ahead. Well, the other thing about the new generation, I think it's so exciting because you're critiquing it. You're not just conforming to it. You're asking new questions. You're this, this, and this, deconstructing it in a very constructive way because you're not going to put up with the stuff that we put up with years ago, which is totally institutionalized and focused you know, on medicalization and technology. We are transcending that, and you are the new generation asking questions, and there's there's issues about that. People start complaining, oh, the new generation, they don't know what to do. Well, they know exactly what to do and you're starting to do it and you're, you're an example of it. You're a voice for another generation. So well, I appreciate um, that. But it was really your generation that were the pioneers to put people, you know, that are now entering the field to make that positive change. So if it wasn't for people like Dr. Gene Watson, who, you know, were able to, you know, when, when everyone was going one way, you were going the other and you were delivering these beliefs and theories that maybe people uh, hadn't quite been aware of or had never even thought of before too. So I want to thank you for that because I do think a lot of what is going on today is thanks to the incredible work that you're doing as well too. I do have one last question for you before we go and I'm really excited. 
um, to ask you this one too, but in your work, you've suggested that healing exists through a transpersonal and caring movement when, and I quote, each feels a connection with the other at a spirit level, thus it transcends time and space, opening up new possibilities for healing and human connection at a deeper level than physical interaction. Now with the delivery of healthcare being a multidisciplinary approach, how can nurses support continuity of healing and caring within that interdisciplinary team setting? Because nurses are the, at the forefront and we are at the, the bedside more than any other profession, you know, how can we work with those other disciplines to ensure that everyone is promoting this new theory in, in nursing? Well, one way of thinking about it, historically, mm -hmm. everybody's been working under medical science model. Yeah. The future is going to be caring science model. They may not call it that, but it's an invitation for the whole system, the consciousness of the system, to where you are successful in a new approach to healthcare mm -hmm. is where you have a shared consciousness. If you have a shared consciousness of, say, Caritas consciousness among all the practitioners, among all the health workers in that system, you will have a healing environment. And part of the challenge or opportunity for hospitals is to now become caring and healing systems, not just medical treatment systems. Mm -hmm. And the work that I'm doing with hospitals is really helping to transform change of self and system from the inside out, mm -hmm. where you share this. And so while you can say we developed this knowledge of caring science, knowledge is public. It's shared with everybody, just like we've used knowledge from all other disciplines. Other disciplines can now use their knowledge and are using their knowledge mm -hmm. to where it becomes transdisciplinary. So it doesn't mean like you have to own it, but you have to take responsibility for giving voice and helping to advance it because it's about the survival of humanity and our planet in terms of right now and the future. And I do want to say that in my time, having worked in hospitals, often when it's, you know, you're part of one discipline, it'll be a nursing meeting or a social work meeting or a physician meeting, but it's very rare that you get everyone all together in one room. And I think that would be such a great opportunity to really transform and, and transition maybe our approach to healthcare and the delivery of it by all being on the same page. That would be such a great opportunity to, to do that. And I want to get your thoughts on that. Well, I think historically we've had the paradigm, mm -hmm. you know, the, the hierarchy, medicine at the top, and actually the patients are at the very bottom. <laughs> and now we've moved to a circle. And the circle is the patient families in the center and all the practitioners around the edge. And if you have a shared consciousness mm -hmm. for all those around the center, circle of the fa patient family community mm -hmm. then you have transformation of healthcare, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening that's what has to happen for a new world that's upon us mm -hmm. uh, dr gene watson i want to thank you very much for your time and for speaking with me today it was an absolute pleasure and honor and dream come true um, mm -hmm. have the opportunity to do this i uh, thank you for all your inspiration that you've given me and i am excited to continue to share your work with others as we continue to work with our patients and families all across the world to make this place so much better for our patients, our families, and for society as a whole. Thank you so much. This was an absolute honor and dream come true. You're welcome. But I want to just put in a plug that if, if people are interested in any more information, they can go yeah. to www.watsoncaringscience.org. You can become student members. You can have access to emails and to um, videos and all sorts of things. So I wish you all the best and thank you for the privilege of being with me. Hi everyone. I want to take this moment to thank Dr. Jean Watson for speaking with me today. It was an absolute honor and a privilege to talk with her about the past, the present, and the future of nursing and the delivery of healthcare as we continue to see a shift in paradigm from a science-based approach focused solely on the body to adapting the caring science theory which connects the body, the mind, and the spirit. As nursing and medical frontline professionals, we have a real opportunity to embark upon an intentional journey with our patients and families that consist of caring and compassion. If you would like to check out more of the incredible work that Dr. Jean Watson has done over her career and continues to do, please visit watsonsciencecaring.org. Thank you so much, and please subscribe to the Adventures News blog.